The National Labor Relations Act, or NLRA, also known as the Wagner Act, regulates how employers must interact and bargain with labor unions that represent a majority of their employees. But what if a majority of the employees repudiate union representation shortly after certifying the union as their representative for collective bargaining? The United States Supreme Court considered this question in Brooks v. National Labor Relations Board. Ray Brooks owned a Chrysler Plymouth car dealership in California. In April of 1951, eight of Brooks's 13 employees voted to appoint the local branch of the International Association of Machinists, which we'll call the union, as their labor union. One week later, nine of the 13 employees gave Brooks a handwritten letter that stated they didn't want to be represented by the union. The next day, the National Labor Relations Board, or NLRB, certified the union as the employee's representative for collective bargaining. But Brooks refused to bargain with the union, citing the handwritten letter and case law from the Sixth Circuit that relieved an employer of its duty to bargain collectively with a union in a similar case. Subsequently, the union filed a charge against Brooks for unfair labor practices, and the NLRB brought a complaint based on the charge. An administrative law judge found that Brooks committed an unfair labor practice by refusing to bargain with the union, and the NLRB affirmed the findings. Brooks appealed to the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, which affirmed. The United States Supreme Court granted cert to resolve a circuit split. 